The objective of competition enforcement is not to punish infringers, but to ensure that firms comply with competition rules to the ultimate benefit of consumers. For serious infringements, like cartels, sanctions are crucial to ensure deterrence, but in some other cases, commitments may be a valuable alternative. Unlike prohibitions, commitment decisions do not entail the finding of an infringement. They simply bring an end to an investigation in light of remedies proposed by the parties and made binding by the competition authority. Commitments may include the divestiture of assets, in that case they are called structural, or the provision of goods or services under specified conditions, behavioral commitments. As said, typically they are not an option for the most serious competition infringements like cartels. Adequate commitments must address the competition concerns they target, avoid any ambiguity and be self-executing. Commitments have been introduced in an increasing number of jurisdictions over the years. What are the reasons for this spectacular growth? Well, commitments may offer a number of advantages. From the perspective of a competition authority, the key benefit is the swift reinstatement of competitive conditions, often long before a prohibition decision. Imagine how important this may be in a nascent or fast-growing market. Moreover, commitments may save administrative resources and reduce the risk of long-lasting and costly appeals. The advantages for the investigated firm are clear. The case will end without the establishment of an infringement, without fines and without reputational damages. A commitment decision also implies lower risks of follow-on private actions. Unfortunately, it's not so easy to find the right commitments. If the bargaining power between the enforcer and the party is unbalanced, the commitments may result inadequate or, on the contrary, too severe and hence disproportionate. For example, competition authorities might be tempted to use commitments to regulate the conduct of the firm in the market. A very serious consequence is that, since no infringement is established, commitment decisions provide no legal certainty on the borders between legal and illegal conducts. Now, let's see how commitments work in practice. The procedure before the European Commission is a good example of process leading to the adoption of commitments. The party can express an interest in offering commitments at any stage of the investigation. Then the European Commission meets with the party and clarifies the main competition concerns at stake to enable the firm to fine-tune and submit appropriate commitments. After that, the European Commission carries out a market test allowing interested stakeholders, like competitors or customers, to provide the observations. The results are then discussed with the party in a state of play meeting, which allows the company to amend its final commitments accordingly. It is important to underline that the parties can decide to discontinue this process at any time. The adoption of the commitment decision is not the end of the story. The competition authority will then have to ensure compliance and intervene in case of need. Commitment decisions may be eventually reviewed and are subject to appeal. Actually, there are two appeals before the European courts that prompted to famous rulings. The first is the Arosa case. The claimant believed that the commitments were too invasive and disproportionate. The Court of Justice held that the European Commission is not required to identify the most proportionate commitments possible, but only to select the most proportionate among the commitments offered by the parties. On the contrary, in the Morningstar case, the claimant argued that the commitments were inadequate. The General Court stated that the European Commission enjoys a wide discretion in whether to accept or reject commitments especially if a complex economic assessment is involved. Finally, when may commitments be a valid alternative to prohibition decisions? First, commitments need to be suitable. They may be a good option when they solve the competition issues. 
faster and possibly better than a cease and desist order. They are hardly appropriate for serious and extended infringements. In this case, it is better to impose sanctions and ensure deterrence. In addition, timing is essential. Commitments should not come too late, but neither too early, when the competition authority has not gained yet a clear understanding of the facts of the case. Second, commitments should be simple. They should not require too many details or regulations. Otherwise, it is better to adopt a prohibition decision and leave parties to determine their conduct. Ideally, commitments should involve few parties, also to minimize the risk of hybrid cases in which only some parties offer commitments. In conclusion, commitment decisions may be a valuable tool for competition authorities, provided that they are used in the right way and at the right time.